Hi, I'm Barb Troyer, and I, I think I'm winning the award for the longest title ever. We'll get up here. Um, how Cupcakes inspired a conversation about pregnant cows and milk at my wedding party and the, or the joys of a vegan plant-based diet. So where do the wedding cupcakes come in? Well, Kate of introvert fame spontaneously decided to make me vegan cupcakes for my wedding party. It was awesome. I didn't have to do anything. There was me chowing down. And it was a good conversation starter because um, Heidi of Karmic Payback fame from Ignite Band 1, if you guys remember that, she, um, we had a good conversation with her and her husband about why vegan. So that's what I wanted to talk to, talk to you guys about tonight. Um, a lot of people think about vegetarians and vegans maybe kind of like this, um, pretty hippie-ish. Um, I just wanted to explain what, what it is. You probably are familiar with vegetarianism, but a vegan also in, in, I mean, they don't eat animal flesh, but also they don't eat animal products like eggs and cheese and milk. So why vegan? Um, we're going to go over this a little bit more, but it's better for your health. It's better for the planet, and it's a compassionate choice. One of the things, one of the reasons it's better for your health um, is, well, actually, I wanted to go over this first. I forgot about this slide. I just wanted to consider, I wanted you to think for a second why you eat what you eat and why what is on your plate is on your plate. Is it habit, is it convenience, familiarity, peer pressure, religion, tradition? Maybe you just don't want to think about it. And this, Homer. Mmm, cholesterol. Well, that's what you're getting a lot of when you have animal products because that's the only place it comes from. If you have history of heart disease and cancer in your family like I do, it, you know, you might want to think about what you're putting in your body. Um, so is it really healthy? Come on. Is it, can you really be healthy? Yes, there have been a lot of studies actually that show that even in infancy all the way through adulthood, a well-planned vegan or vegetarian diet can be extremely healthy. So. Aren't we carnivores? Come on, you know, aren't, it's natural for me to eat animals. Well, just think about human anatomy for a second. You have blunt, flat teeth. You have a long digestive tract, which is good for digesting plant matter. You grind your jaw. These are things that are much like herbivores. How do you get enough protein? I don't know why Americans are obsessed with protein, but that's a question we get all the time. All I have to do is eat a wide variety of plants, you know, beans, grains, leafy greens. I'm good to go. Um, the planet, and I'm, I'm glad we had some, some talk about environmentalism earlier. Uh, factory farm animals, the number one producer of greenhouse gases. Yes, millions of cows farting are ruining the planet. <laughs> you can make a difference by, by not supporting that industry. Um, it is a compassionate choice. You've probably seen this quote before. The greatness of a nation and its moral progress can be judged by the way its animals are treated. And for me, that's true. Uh, I believe, you know, animals are sentient beings and they, you know, they should be treated with respect. So what is a factory farm? Well, I'm glad that Brad had some f better photos even than I did of factory farms because these are not great places. They're large warehouses where animals are treated pretty cruelly and it's, it's not a great industry and I, I invite you to do some research. Uh, so what does it matter if I drink milk? How does that hurt cows? Well, how does a cow, a cow is pregnant and that's how she produces milk. They take the babies away right away. The baby cows go into the veal industry. Uh, the baby females go right back into the, into the same thing. Um, if you're eating eggs, how does, that, how does that hurt chickens? Well, for one thing, they take all the baby chicks and they just discard them in horrible ways. Um, they pack the egg-laying hens into cages, you know, and they have about a half a square foot to move. They, that's, not, that's no life. Um, and so what about if you're eating cage-free? Wasn't free-range and cage-free, isn't that great? Not really. It's a label. It's not really a required inspection. Um, there's no guarantee they're actually even going to go outside. And, you know, there's good questions to ask um, about what happens to the male chicks and such in that industry. So I just wanted I just want to get you thinking. I wanted to get you thinking about what we eat, why we eat what we eat. Why do we treat our pets differently than we do with these farm animals? They're, they're both sentient beings. They're both smart and compassionate and can feel pain. Um, oh, God, this question I get all the time. What if you're on a desert island and all you could eat was a hamburger and the hamburger was going to save your husband's life? <laughs> well, okay. I'd probably eat it. It's, for me, it's about compassion and what I do every day to make a difference. Um, so is going vegetarian enough? Um, you know what? It's a great start. That's where I started. I was vegetarian for three years. I'm just more recently vegan. And, you know, it's going to take a while to train, retrain your taste buds. And cheese is really good, and it's really, really hard to to not eat that, but you know what? To me, it's worth it. Um, lifelong vegetarian can save a heck of a lot of animals. This is a vegetarian statistic, so a vegan can have an either, even greater impact. 
So that, you know, the impact's gonna be on your health, on the environment, and, you know, it's a compassionate choice. So here's some, I invite you to do some more research. You can, you can go vegan. I'm just an ordinary person, I can do it, and if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks.